Okay, so this time last week, my typing speed was dreadful, but now I've more than doubled it to just over 100 words per minute. So in this video, I wanna teach you exactly how I did it and how you guys can do the same. Now, you're probably thinking, why bother? Like, I've learned to type pretty fast already, so what's the point and what's the benefit of learning to touch type now? Well, if you're happy with the way you're typing, then you've probably clicked on the wrong video. But if you're anything like me, your old self-taught style of typing is probably holding you back in a number of different ways. Firstly, productivity. So the average typist types at around 40 to 50 words per minute. And let's say that the average person writes about 3,500 words per day. We'll be typing for around one and a half hours on a typical day. But if we just increase our typing speed to around 120 words per minute, we'll be able to write the same number of words in just 30 minutes, saving us like a crazy 300 plus hours in a year. Secondly, we've got health. Now, if you're using the same two or three fingers to type, or you're using some other poor typing technique, there's a good chance we could develop some kind of repetitive strain injury in our fingers. Like I used to massively overuse my index fingers whenever I typed, which is kind of common for a lot of self-taught typists. And this meant that after about 10 to 15 minutes of typing, I started getting quite a bit of pain in those fingers. So to prevent long-lasting damage in those fingers, I wanted to learn to touch type to spread the load more evenly across each of my fingers. And finally, we got creativity. Basically, if we can type at the pace we think, we never have to interrupt our stream of thought, and we can just get a really messy first draft of whatever we're trying to do on a piece of paper. So whether that's writing a blog, writing an article, writing an essay, writing a newsletter, whatever it is, it's really quick and easy just to get that thing on a page and be super creative because we don't have to think about what we're trying to type. Okay, so now we know why we should learn to touch type. Let's look at how we can do it properly. The first tip then is to set a baseline. Basically, we can't see whether or not we're making any decent progress unless we have a really clear picture of how good our typing is right now. So my advice then is to use a typing test like 10 Fast Fingers, which is probably my favorite typing test out there, which gives us a super accurate measurement of our typing speed. Now, when you first do this, you'll probably be pretty slow unless you're some sort of productivity nerd already. And this is especially true if you're trying to use the correct finger technique for the first time. Like when I first tried to do this last week, I was struggling to hit even 30 words per minute using the correct technique. So don't feel bad if you can't quite get it right the first time. And to help you set this baseline and to track your progress, I've also created a Notion template that you can check out below this video. You can download it for free and basically use Use it to your heart's content. Right, so this next tip, practicing, sounds kind of obvious, but there's a really awesome learning pathway that I use that I want to share with you too. Okay, so first we need to understand the foundations of touch typing, and the best site I've found to do this in a fun, engaging, and genuinely useful way is Typing Club. Basically, we can play all these different games and we can level up step by step, so giving us a really decent way of understanding the basics of touch typing from the ground up. Then from there, we can graduate to something like 10 Fast Fingers, which is great for learning to touch type the top 200 to 1,000 most common words in the English language. And given that 80% of written English consists of these top 1,000 words, it's an absolute game changer when it comes to touch typing properly. Finally, our goal is to iron out all those little mistakes that we tend to make whenever we're trying to type quickly. And a really good and useful website that I quite like is Keeper or key BR. I'm not, I'm not too sure how exactly we say it, but the great thing about this site is that as we type, it learns what letters or what combinations of letters we struggle with most and makes us practice them more often. So we're basically forced to fix all those weak points and consistently try to improve them every single day. Now, my recommendation here is to keep things pretty slow to begin with. The last thing you want to do is to try to type really quickly and then grow even more bad habits. So just try to find a gentle rhythm with your typing and just try to stay consistent. Even 10 minutes a day is plenty if you want to learn to touch type fast. Over the last week, I noticed that I spent a hell of a lot of time correcting my own mistakes. Now, obviously this was expected. I'm going to make a lot of mistakes whenever I'm trying to learn to touch type, but I couldn't help but think that I was wasting a lot of time just smashing the backspace button. And I thought, hey, there must be a quicker way of correcting all these mistakes. So I did a bit of digging and I noticed that there are two really essential keyboard shortcuts that you need to know when it comes to typing faster. The first one is option and backspace on the Mac or control and backspace on Windows. And this allows us to really quickly delete an entire word without having to hit that backspace multiple times. So if I typed in something like, not all those who wander are lost, okay. Here I typed in not all those who wander are list. Um, and I meant to type in not all those who wander are lost. So instead of hitting backspace multiple times, if I just hit option and backspace, I can delete that last word and I can then type the new word in its place. The second shortcut is command and backspace on Mac and shift plus home backspace on Windows. In fact, I'm not too sure what the shortcut is on Windows exactly. So I will leave the 
the command prompt on the screen here somewhere. But basically, this allows us to, de to delete the entire line. Now, normally when I want to delete an entire line, I would either triple click it or I would highlight the whole thing using my mouse and press delete. This just allows us to save a whole lot of faff by clicking a couple of keys for the same result. So if we look at the example here, all we need to do is press command and backspace and the entire line has gone. To be honest, the more we can avoid using our mouse, the better it's going to be for us, and the faster we're going to be at navigating everything that's on our computer. And this is why I decided to download an app called Alfred, which I think is only available on um, Mac, but um, I'm sure there's something similar on Windows. But basically, the idea of Alfred is that instead of trying to find folders or apps using our mouse, we can just find everything that we need using our keyboard. So let's say we want to open Spotify. We could just type in option and spacebar to open up Alfred. Then we type in whatever we're looking for and hit enter. And you know, Alfred can be used to find pretty much anything, whether it's files, searching the internet, doing basic sums, and just a whole bunch of different stuff that's gonna save us a ton of time. The next tip is to make sure our fingers are always in the correct position when we're typing. And there are sites like Typing Club, which are really, really good and useful at helping us to understand the basics and to know exactly where our fingers need to go. But really, it's as simple as putting our hands in the home row position, um, as it's typically called. And so this means that on the left hand, we've got A, S, D, and F. And then on the right hand, we've got J, K, L, and semicolon. And you know what? It's pretty easy to figure out where we need to put our fingers without actually having to look at the keyboard. Because if you have a look at your keyboard now, you can probably see that there are little raised bars on the F and J keys. And this is where we want to be putting our index fingers. Then from this position, we just want to be making sure we're covering all the correct and relevant keys with the correct fingers. And I've got a little graphic on the screen here somewhere so that you can see which finger should be pressing which key. Now, this method may feel super uncomfortable and awkward and slow to begin with, but you just kind of need to stick with it. And over time, you will find your own rhythm. You'll find your own methods of typing faster. Like, for instance, I typically miss out typing with my pinky fingers because I find that a little bit awkward to do. And that's a really typical thing for a lot of fast typists to do. So if you're the sort of person that finds using your pinky a little bit awkward, that's cool. It doesn't mean you're not going to be able to type fast. So just find your method, find what works, but try to stick as closely to the proper method as you can. Then when we actually begin typing and begin practicing using these techniques, we want to make sure our hands are covered. It's super, super tempting to peek at our hands as we type, but it's really difficult to train our muscle memory if we're constantly looking down at our fingers as we're trying to learn. If this is something you struggle with, you can always get a cloth to cover your hands. You can always get a keyboard cover just from Amazon for like 10 or 20 quid, and that will cover all the keys as you type. So even if you do look down, there's like, nothing to see or in fact one thing I did do is you can get like a little miniature keyboard on your screen if you just go into the settings of your computer you can get that keyboard on your screen so you have that reference point of where the keys are rather than looking down at your fingers and finally and perhaps surprisingly touch typing well isn't just about what our fingers are doing but it's also about the positioning and the posture of our entire body now there's like a load of different studies out there about the best way to sit and how to get our posture correct but essentially it all boils down to four things first we need to make sure our feet are flat on the ground and our neck and back is straight and this is also why I highly recommend and everyone buys an ergonomic chair like this one here from Herman Miller. Secondly, we need to make sure our elbows are about 90 degrees to the table. Now, at the moment, this isn't so great because it's sort of tilted upwards a little bit, but if this was in the correct position, we'd want to make sure that the table was level with the armrest of our chair. Thirdly, we should keep our wrists in a neutral position and not bending backwards. So if we're using like a laptop on a table, it's probably fine, but if we have something like a mechanical keyboard, which tends to be a little bit higher, it may be worth buying a wrist support so that our wrists and our hands remain in that neutral position. And finally, we want to make sure that the top of our monitor is at eye level, so we're not sort of tilting our head too far up or too far down, and we're just in a nice, relaxed, comfortable position to start typing nicely and fast. Now there are a few advanced tips and tricks on how to type faster such as using different keyboard layouts or using different types of keyboards but I think I'm going to save that for a different day. I think there's plenty of stuff for you to be getting on with in this video. For now though if you're in the mood to do stuff quickly you can also check out my video on how to learn faster somewhere over here. But yeah that's it for now and I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye.